You can do. You guys can come closer if you want. I won't bite. Um, so you can use this with or without the computer. So we're just going to go over the microscope right now. Um, first thing is we have our train off, and it does go up and down. Are you gonna? Are you listening, ma'am? I think we're getting started. You weren't you in here earlier? No, you weren't. No. Okay. All right. So we've got our tilting trident. Goes up and down for different heights. Um, one thing to note is we do have adjusting eyepieces. So if you wear glasses or read with your glasses on, you want to keep it at zero zero. Um, if it's changed around, essentially that is you wearing someone else's glasses. So that's going to give you a headache. So we'll start at zero zero. I have contacts, so I would stay at zero zero. Um, if you want to read with your glasses off, essentially you start at zero zero, you get your sample in focus, and then like you go to the eye doctor, you close one eye, and you adjust until it's in focus, then you close the other eye and you adjust. Once you know what your numbers are, those probably won't change until you need a new prescription. So I always wonder that, is that a stupid question? So people with flat that need glasses. Mm -hmm. You can you take your glasses off when you use it, and then adjust it to the glasses and that's You okay. can use. Okay. Uh, so, so, so guys, before we start, I think you guys just write my name and email here, yes, so mm -hmm. that I can put you on the calendar. Since we are 20 here, so it would be good for us to uh, have a calendar for that. So this is Devin, and these are uh, my people. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I've worked with them before. Perfect. Yeah, so it's kind of personal preference. You can read with your glasses on, you can read with your glasses off. Um, it's really up to you. So, but we do want to make sure that we are at zero, zero, at least to start. So, next thing we have is on this side, this is our Trinoc. So this is what splits our light to our camera or our eyes. So we have a little picture in is eyes and camera, so you're split 50-50. Middle is just to your eyes, and all the way out is to your camera. That's gonna make a difference when you're doing your fluorescent imaging. Um, so one thing is, if it's all the way in, sometimes you'll get a glare from your room lights that are coming through your eyepieces. So you're gonna get the best pictures if you're all the way to your camera. So, that is that. So to turn this bad boy on, that's your light. This is our bright field. If you need fluorescence, it's just this on off button. Um, both of these are LED lights, so you can turn them on and off as many times as you want. You don't have to wait for it to cool down or warm up like sorry, you used to. What's the bright field you said? Bright field is this button. Oh, that's on, okay. Yep. That's It'll give you a little beep. And then the other box the other is separate. It's just this on off. Just the fluorescence. Mm -hmm. Where's that come from? That like it's coming from, from back here. But where? Yes. Yeah, but where is it illuminating from? There? Um, it comes through here and goes down. Straight down. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So. Um, like it's focused. Yep. Yeah, no, you're it's good. Because cool. it's reflective, right? It's yep. Yeah. Yep. So what it is is going through here. We're hitting our cubes, and our cubes have a dichroic that's pointing it down. And then we have filters so that we can filter out the light for the specific wavelength that we want. So, um, next we have our mirror turret. So this is our, um, our shutter, essentially. So you have a shutter back here, closed, open, closed. Um, this is really nice if you don't wanna bleach your samples, you can just close it. Um, I will say a lot of people call me and they don't have light, and that's because this is not open. So, but you'll notice if I turn on my bright field, this doesn't do anything because we're coming from below. So, in here we have our cubes, they're all labeled. We have one is bright field, two is Daffy, three is your Fitzy, your GFP, four is a unique cube. It's actually a long pass GFP. So what that is, is it's hitting your GFP and everything above it. So if you want to see your GFP and your red in this at the same time, that's this one. Because essentially we're not cutting out the red, we're letting it go through too. 
Five is your Texas Red and Cherry RFP, your Reds. And then six is your DIC. So DIC is Differential Interface Contrast, I think is the form. Um, that gives you a 3D effect. So that is our mirror turret. What? DIC. How does it give a 3D effect? So we'll get to it. Hold on. So then we have this slider. We're going to get to that too in a second when we go over DIC. So our objectives. We have a 4X, 10X, 20X, 40X. We skip a space because next we're going to oil and we want to be sure we don't get oil on our 40X. 60X oil, 100X oil. So for your 4X, next you have your condenser. So we have this little lever here that pops this top lens in and out of the light path. So for your 4X, your field of view is so large, you need it out. For everything else, you want it popped up. Now you can see it, you can see stuff with it out, but when it's popped back in, you're directing the light and you're gonna get a much better quality image. So 4X, it's out of the way, everywhere else, it's up. So next we have our condenser. So all of these objectives are phase. You need two things in order to do phase. You have to have phase ring in your objective. That's in there all the time. Then what you have to do is you have the phase rings in your condenser. So those line up with the objective and that's what gives you a 3D contrast, kind of. I'll show it to you up there, but. So for phase, we need to make sure that we have a phase ring in. So on this condenser, you have a little white dot and little spaces. So wherever the white dot is, that's what's in the way. So on our objective, if you need, it says pH one. So that means I want my pH one in there. Now on my 40X, it tells me pH two. So that means I want my pH two in there. The software will prompt you and tell you what you need to do. So don't worry too much about it. So that's for your phase. For DIC, DIC takes four components. We need two above the sample and two below the sample. So for DIC, you want this cube, DIC cube in. Then we have this slider, has DIC on it. We want that in. What, what does DIC stand for? Differential interface contract. Well, so, so what is it, I guess? It is, is a 3D one? It is another 3D effect. So phase um, is kind of the cheaper way to do it because you only need two parts. DIC is the more expensive, better way to do it. You're gonna get better contrast. DIC is really good for your higher objectives. Um, one thing, phase, you can do phase on plastic and glass. DIC you cannot do on plastic. So that's just it's part of the way it bends the light. It doesn't work with plastic. So for our DIC, we've got this up in there. We've got this slider in. Next, we have a DIC prism just like we have the phase. So DIC 40 equates to the 40. This is where DIC looks better on higher mats. So um, a way to trick it, you can do the 20X with the DIC 40 and you'll get very similar. DIC 40 with the DIC 40 is gonna look really good. So for 60X, the way we trick it is we do DIC 100 for both 60 and 100 value. I think that DIC looks better than getting a separate one. So then the last part is this slider goes in. This does not come out. It comes out and it hits a spot, so you just slide it in. So let me make sure. So I got my DIC 40. So that's DIC. We've got our two up top, our two down the bottom. So one thing to note, this, the way it is, it's blocking a lot of light. So if you're on your fluorescence, I'm telling you because I've done it twice today, if you're on your fluorescence and you aren't getting any signal, this is in the way. So we need to just pull it out. You can kind of feel it's got a click stop. Pull it out when you're not using it. So. Does so anyone have any questions about the bright field stuff before we switch to fluorescence? Okay, all right. So fluorescence, we're gonna turn this 
on. I'm going to turn this off. This does have an up and down arrow where you can adjust your intensity. It's LED and it's crazy bright, so I haven't been needing a whole lot. Um, so let's go to So you can kind of see right now, we have our top lens in. So with your top lens, there's glass. So one thing about light is glass reflects a lot of light. So what we want to do is we want to get this out of the way. Um, leaving this in, sometimes you'll get a background and it's because it's hitting that and bouncing back up. So just put it out. It's not extremely crucial, but it's just this little lever right here. That's a condenser? Yep, it's, so it's this top okay. lens, yeah. Okay. Um, so with fluorescence, you know, the bottom doesn't matter as much because we're not using that light path. So this can be in and out, these can be on whatever thing you want them to be. It's Do you not get any weird reflectance from okay. No, it's too far down. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is going to be the primary one you want to cut out. So then we have our shutter. So we have, um, you know, that's your Daffy, Fitzy. Um, so you can kind of see these are both green. Well, they'll fluoresce both green, and that's your two cubes. One is cutting out the red, the other one is not cutting out the red. Um, that's your Texas red. So that is your fluorescence. I'm going to show you guys the software now so you can kind of see what everything does. So it's this CellSense standard. So when you log in to your user for the first time, it's going to ask you to accept the terms. It's gonna ask you what kind of user you wanna be, if you wanna be. Power user is the default and that one's fine. You can stick with it. And then it's gonna ask you if you want this simple layout. Do not select simple layout or else your layout is gonna look like a kindergartner layout. So we don't want that. Um, so this is our main start page. So up here we have all of our objectives. Um, the, the microscope is not smart, so you have to tell it what you're on. Um, and then we have our observation methods. So these are going to be what prompts you to do what you need to do to get the light path, what it should be. So for right now, we're on bright field, and it tells me, okay, put your manual condenser in bright field. Oh, that's great because I wasn't. So we'll just keep turning until we hit this little bright field dude. And then we want this in bright field. And we just hit OK. So let me get something in focus so we can. Now I just hit my live. So we're on manual exposure, which is not working. So I always suggest for bright field stuff to just do automatic. It normally does a really good job. Um, if you want to do manual and play with it, you can. So this is automatic. So this is where I'm halfway in. So we're splitting the light. Now if I go full, it's brighter. Looks a little bit better. So. Um, just for today's purposes, we're not going to do that. But this is a lovely little brine shrimp in all of its glory. So um, then we have our white balance. So this is basically telling the computer and the camera, this is what's white. So you pick white background, you tell it what's white, and then it'll fix the background and adjust the colors to correlate. So you might say this brine shrimp is like kind of hard to see. So let's try it with phase. So right now I'm on my 40. So if I click phase, it'll tell me I need my manual condenser to go to pH two. So I will just turn until I hit pH two. I hit okay. 
Now I've got a little bit of a 3D. Now to me, this is where automatic exposure gets a little too much in my mind. That's a little bright for me. So I would probably bump it down a little bit. But this is what your phase looks like. Now, I'll show you the difference between the phase and the DIC. So right now we have our phase, we got our phase ring in, and we have our phase ring in here. So now if we want to do DIC, I'm going to click DIC, and it's going to tell me my mirror chart needs to go to DIC, which is number six, and then it's going to tell me this needs to go to DIC. And then my last two components are the slider and this slider. So I'll hit OK. Now, this is where you can turn this slider to give you a little bit. This is turning, there's a mirror in here, there's a prism in here. So turning it gives you a different contrast. So, what is that? This is like just the DIC mirror in here. It, it's bending the light to get you that effect. Um, so turning it is kind of personal preference. I prefer a darker DIC. I like that. Some people prefer a lighter DIC. More like that. Um, but that's essentially your DIC. So if we wanted to take a picture, we just hit snapshot. And now we have this picture. Um, sorry. If you wanted to do a scale bar, you can go to view scale bar. So now when I change my objectives, it'll change that. Well, I picked them. It'll change that scale bar. Actually, it won't because I took a picture. So if we're on live, yeah. now it will change my scale bar. Okay. Yeah. So say I love this image. I want to save it. There's two different ways we can save. We can save as a JPEG and we can save as a TIFF. TIFF um, is a much larger file because TIFF has all your metadata. So TIFF is going to have that this was on 20x. It's going to have that you were on DIC. It's going to have your exposure time, everything. So publications want TIFF. They want to see all that and make sure you didn't draw results on there. So, um, so you can save it as a TIFF. If you want this scale bar on your TIFF, what you have to do is image. Well, you have to be on an image. And then you go image. Burn in info. So what this is doing is it's telling you once you put this scale bar on, we cannot take this scale bar off. So if you just hit yes. So now if I go to view scale bar, my scale bar is on there forever. So this, that was, you took it under the wrong magnification, so that's the wrong scale bar? Yes. Cool. Just yeah. check. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so that is how you would do that. Now, if you wanted to just, let's just go, let's do another one. So we're on 40. Let's do, let's do another one. So now if I wanted to save as a JPEG, I have to go to my image, file, save as. So now when you save as a JPEG and hit save, it's going to tell you, are you sure? Because once you do this, you're going to lose that metadata, and you're never going to be able to take the scale bar off. It's on there forever. You just hit yes, and that's how you do it. So JPEGs are nice if you don't necessarily need all the metadata or the massive TIFF files. Um, sometimes TIFFs can be so large you can't email them. So if you need to just email something really quick, JPEG is going to be better. Um, for any kind of publications or posters, I would do TIFF. So, once I have this image, I can also go to adjust display and I can play with this histogram. If I wanted it to be lighter, brighter, we can play with that, bring in to our peaks. Um, I prefer to play with the histogram after you've already taken the picture. That way you have all the levels. If you take your picture like this, and take a picture you can't un, uh, you can't bring those back out those are like that forever so I like to I like to take up my picture with my histogram all the way out and then I can play with it later um, that will also help with publications too because they want to make sure that you didn't 
you know, maybe I brought it in so far, you can't see the detail, like, they, they want to make sure that you didn't artificially play with this some way. So, I would suggest leaving it as fixed and then playing with it later. So that is, so Brightfield, it'll tell you your mirror turn needs to go to Brightfield, your condenser needs to go to Brightfield. Okay. Phase is the same way. It'll tell you based on what objective you have, what pH ring you're supposed to be in. DIC will do the same thing. It'll tell you that mirror turret and that condenser, what you're supposed to be in. So for fluorescence, what we're gonna wanna do is turn that light off. This is already on. We're gonna flip this out and now we're gonna open our shutter and go to something that has fluorescence. There we go. So let me put on some cells and we can play with some fluorescence. I think the phase looked way better than the DIC. Is that not true? So the phase sometimes gives you this weird, almost electric looking kind it's, of yeah. thing. It seemed like more detail, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it depends on what you're looking for. I, I think phase does normally a pretty good job. Um, It's just kind of different techniques. This. So the, again. the DIC is using that prism to bend the light. What was the phase doing? So the phase actually puts two phase rings on top of each other um, and does the light that way. It's just two different methods of bending the light. sense why it gives the 3D effect. There's like two light sources. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. you really want to be in manual and bring this down. It's very bright. So one thing to note is this camera can take a picture in grayscale or can take a picture with color. So with fluorescence, you want grayscale because you'll actually get more gradient with your grays. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit this fitzy. And what this is doing is actually taking the picture in a gray and we're pseudo coloring it green. So if I were to choose Dappy, it's going to pseudo color it blue, but that's not my actual Dappy signal. I want to go to this and get my Dappy. Um, so one thing, so like with our Fitzy, that's our Fitzy. So now if I go to GFP, because this cube is catching two colors, it is actually color. It's in color. So let's go to 40 because you're, that's just not. So you'll notice we have our green and our red. So if we were to switch it to Fitzy, it's going to pseudo color it all green, but that's not really what it should be. So that is one thing to note is this cube, just the way it is, is taking it in color. And then if we wanted to, we can do our Tritzy. Okay, Tritzy, and you'll just see it kind of cleans it up a little bit. Um, we, you'll notice it more in the little spaces, but so that is the fluorescence. Let me snapshot it. So for fluorescence, um, say I have so this sample has Daffy, Fitzy, Tritzy on it. 
I want to take all three of them and I want them in one picture and I want them to sit on each other. So what we would do, we go to process. Let me start over. Okay, so you're going to click this. It's multi-channel. You'll click it on. Now I'm going to add, I have Daffy, Fitzy, Tripsy. Okay, so with each floor of four, you're going to have kind of different exposure times. So Daffy normally is one of our brightest. So it'll probably be like screaming. Yeah, so we're way overexposed. So now we flip over to our camera and we're just going to bump this down until I see some good detail in my cells. Um, so that looks pretty good to me. So then I'll go over to the process and I'll hit read settings. So now it's read this exposure time for me. So next, wherever your little microscope is, is what you're looking at. So next I'll click my Fitzy. It'll tell me to go to my Fitzy cube. I say, okay. So now that looks pretty good. I don't know, maybe, sure. So then we'll do again, read settings. So now it changed my exposure time. And then Tripsy, one more, actually there. So maybe that's a little bit bright, maybe we'll bump it down and hit read settings. So now that I've got all my settings how I want it, I'm going to hit start. And it's going to tell me go to Daffy. And I'll say okay. I'm on Daffy and then I'll hit okay. And it says go to Fitzy and I'll put in my Fitzy cube. And then Trissy is that one. So now I have this image with all of my, so I can click on and off my colors. I can put it in a tile view. So here's one thing where that histogram will come in handy. So say it is green, if I click on it, my green background is kind of high. So one thing to help is you can bring this in get our background a little bit black. Um, the red, you can kind of tell where the histogram's hitting. It's pretty good, actually. So now, if I look at it all together, it's a little bit cleaner of a background. So you can do that. Um, right now, it is automatically saving these for the process manager. It's saving it. Um, if, if you want to know where it's saving it, you just hit this little pink quarter and you go to process manager and they're saving. And right now it's saving the pictures. So if you wanted to, you could do a subdirectory and do it by date or however you want to do that. Um, but it is automatically saving. Now if you want to do a time lapse, that's this button. So you can tell it how long you want it to record to, how many different intervals, like what the interval, a minute, 30 seconds, an hour, however you want to do that, how many cycles. And you can just press start and it'll take a picture every, at each of those. So that is the gist of it. And when we're done making adjustments, we unclick start. Oh. Clearly, um, if, if I'm happy with that image. Oh. Do I just, is it done? So I save it? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't have, I don't have to end the action of start. No, okay. no. So if you hit start for here and say, well, I only did two cycles, say I do like a hundred. So if I hit start on like my time lapse, um, and I want it to prematurely stop, I can hit stop. Now granted it's doing every 0.13 milliseconds, so it's already done. But um, yeah, this one, you don't, you just hit start and it'll, but this one, if you want it to stop mid stop, you can do that. And um, it will save as a TIFF? Those will save as a VSI. Which is the ex uh, extension for this program? Yes, okay. yes. Do you um, suggest saving VS? If we save it as a VSI, mm -hmm. can we come back, open it with this program, and then tweak yep. the histogram? Okay. Yep. Um, also, VSIs will open in most free software. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's VSI? VSI, yep. 
Um, and then let's see. I was. Yeah. Yeah. It can do more, but that's that will get you started. <laughs> so, so you guys, I'm gonna put this in the calendar. I'll send them to you, and you're free to start using it. So, yeah. so tonight I'll just put everybody in the calendar. If you, if you, basically, take about five minutes, five minutes to, to do ten pictures on an hour. Depends on how many things. Yeah. So, so just block an hour or two. Okay. When you when you book. So that so somebody doesn't, yeah. And then you can just get start. And if you have any questions, come through me and she will show you. Yeah. Um, does it do, never mind, different application, don't worry about it. It's okay. You can ask anything, she's here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think a fluorescent is good for, uh, I, can you spoof it? Yeah, you can spoof it. Yeah. 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 I don't know how you would spoof a Z-Stack. Okay. Because you can't exactly, it doesn't know how far you're moving either. Right. So like there's no way to precisely calculate. Like, it would probably just take a bunch of pictures, yeah. Photoshop them together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We could do, we could put a motorized Z-Stack. No, 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 that was it. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. So since you're here, I love myself. I have your key if you can help me open my door. My I can help you open. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, thank you very much. <laughs> yep, so if you use oil, just be sure to wipe it off with a lens tissue. Um, get a lens tissue wet with lens cleaner, which he's going to buy, and just make sure it's clean of oil. Uh, once that dries on, it's really hard to get it off. So you just want to get it off while it's wet. Yeah, I'm gonna put a very big note there. So <laughs> you can yeah. See that, but, but I'll buy, I'll buy that tonight. So yeah. That, 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 that. I'll definitely cover it when it's not in use, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely cover it when it's not in use. Yeah, it has it's to always going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. It has a cover there. Okay. Yep. So to turn off, you just close the software. It's going to ask if you want to save anything. This is sometimes how I save a bunch of images. I sit close and then. Save and you can save them. Okay. If you don't want to save any, then you just want to make sure both of these are off. Okay. And that's it. And then also, when you come, when the, you, you just have to log in with your dot one. Dot number? Dot number, yes. Okay. And your password. Right now, she's using mine. So okay. I made it in, in such a way so that at least you don't have, some, sometimes you, some people use to have one, one login mm -hmm. and they lose the password. But this is better. Yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah. you just come and log in here. Yeah. And you know who used it last. Pardon? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, but I, I, I think apart from that, it's good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming.